Are you available for a mission? Was a text message that was sent to a bunch of officers on the night of January 24th that started a horrific series of events from Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker. Now, a bunch of those officers are pleading guilty today for things that happened behind that closed door. Everything from what they did all the way to the cover-up. We are finally getting the truth on what happened to these two young men. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Pascal back at it again with another pop-up video. Be sure to follow me on all my social medias, The Pascal Show, one word. Hit that like button down below. And let's not forget to crush that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube and if you're watching on Facebook. Make sure you hit that follow button over there as well if this is your first time checking out this channel right here. Anyway, we got to jump into this story. Now, I have talked about this about six months ago. It, it, it kind of was under the radar for a while, but the story finally started to pick up some some heat, some attention, and we have some new updates revolving around this case of Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker. Now, what happened behind those closed doors is pretty mind-blowing, to say the least, but one of the things that did actually happen, aside from the graphic details and the, 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 the hurt that these men went through, an officer took his weapon out, put it in Michael Jenkins' mouth, and Now, one of the thankful things that happened here is that Michael Jenkins is still alive. He is here on this planet to fight another day and to keep telling his story of the brutal, the brutality that he received from these officers. Now, today, these six officers are to plead guilty to what they did. Now, these Officers like to call themselves the Goon Squad. Very interesting, right? And their names are Patrol Deputy Hunter Elwood, Brett McAlpin. He is a chief investigator for the sheriff's office. Lieutenant Jeffrey Middleton, who was the supervisor for the Goon Squad. Christian Deadman, who served as a narcotics investigator. Daniel Opdyke, who served as a patrol deputy. And Josh Hartfield who served as a narcotics investigator for Richland Police Department. What I find interesting is that Josh Hartfield was in a completely different police department, but he seemed to be receiving these text messages and still a part of this quote-unquote goon squad when the other officers were part of the Rankin County Police Department. Very interesting. So I know a lot of you guys want to know what happened to these two men uh, of course, what they did was unthinkable, and these unthinkable things are right here on the screen so you can see for yourself. And you can even see in the top right-hand corner, that is Michael Jenkins. This is a few days after this whole horrific event happened, the brutality that happened, that he that he was inflicted, that was inflicted upon him. You can see right here. But this is some of the things or a majority of the things that they are saying that's in that is filed in these reports. And they are not in chronological order. And let me just say that as well. Not entirely in chronological order. So they handcuffed the men. They zapped them several times. They threatened to R and unalive them. They, I can't say that part, but that act is, is condemned by military, by the U.S. military. You, you, they, don't even, they don't even do this, okay? But they used that technique but instead of it being water, they used milk, alcohol, chocolate syrup, and cooking grease on them. They used toys, slapping them in the face and shoving it in their mouths. They threw eggs at them. They egged these men. Then they took their clothes off. They, had, they took their clothes off of them and then made them take a shower together to cover up what had happened. Then, of course, we already know the last part. There's a lot more to this. Everything from what I just described to you all the way to the actual cover-up. They said that the group of the goon squad received a text message from another deputy on the same shift saying, are y'all available for a mission? The deputy, Christian Dedman, informed his colleagues, Hunter Elwood, Jeffrey Middleton, and Daniel Opdyke, they were going to a property in Braxton, roughly 30 miles south of Jackson, to handle a complaint received by the office chief investigator, Brett McAlpin. 
The details of what prosecutors say happened that night are shared in the federal charging document. McAlpin's white neighbor told him several black men were staying at a white woman's home there and reported seeing suspicious behavior. Dedman warned the deputies that there might be surveillance cameras on the property. If they spotted any cameras, the officers should knock on the door instead of kicking it down. Interesting. But if not, he told them they had free reign to barge in without a warrant. Then what's wild to me is they said no bad mugshots. Dedman added in another text message. The other deputies understood what he meant. They had the green light to use excessive force on areas of a person's body that would not be captured in a mugshot, prosecutors said. This is a text message that was done between all these dudes in the goon squad. And I, I, I understand that they were also called the death squad as well. These guys were dangerous, y'all. These guys are dangerous, y'all. Dedman told the others, on the radio, another man off-duty Richland police officer Joshua Hartfield would also accompany them. So he said, hey, we got five. Why not make it six and we'll, we'll just have a good old party? Someone from a completely different police department. That's wild. In four separate cars, the five men pulled into the driveway of the four-bedroom ranch-style home. McAlpin was already in the neighborhood watching the property down the street and followed behind. So he was chilling there waiting for his boys to pull up. Man, that is insane. Let's continue. The deputies avoided a surveillance camera above the front door. So they knew that at least. They knew to avoid that. Deadman, Opdyke, and Elward broke open the carport door and Hartfield kicked open the back door. Entering the home without a warrant, the officers encountered two black men, Eddie Parker and Michael Jenkins. Parker was living there to help take care of a woman who owned the actual property. Jenkins, his friend, was just staying there temporarily. Over the next two hours, Parker and Jenkins were subjected to grueling violence at the hands of the six white law enforcement officers, culminating in Jenkins being aimed in the mouth. Code words, the horrors the two men endured, as well as the text messages and other details in this report were included in the federal court document filed on July 31st. The six officers were charged with a combined 13 felonies. I'm hearing that it's 14 now, but they're saying 13 felonies in connection with the, the T and physical A. Of the two men that night, the Justice Department said in a news release, the officers who had been fired or had resigned after the incident pleaded guilty to all charges against them in, a, in federal court last Thursday. The fact that they even had time to even, re, some of them had time to even resign, put in their paperwork and resign is just absolutely ridiculous to me. But moving on, some of the officers involved called themselves, as I told you guys before, the goon squad because of their willingness to use, quote unquote, excessive force and not report it, according to the federal document. The former officers also pleaded guilty Monday to, to state charges. All six faced a charge of conspiracy to commit obstruction of justice, four with the obstruction of justice in first degree. Two were charged with home invasion and one with aggravated A. Now, let me let me just pause right there for a second, because there's something about this that's really just irking my soul. This person, one of them, Elwood, if I'm correct, because we're going to get into that detail in just a minute. He put the, his weapon in someone's mouth and then pulled the trigger. You're telling me that that isn't attempted M? You're telling me he's not looking at an M, attempted M charge right now? That doesn't make any sense. But I'm sure this is some sort of plea deal that they're getting right now. So they're still getting off easy, in my personal opinion. Let's continue. Let's talk about what happened in that house. After the officers entered that home that night, neither Jenkins nor 
Parker resisted. The federal charging document describes how the two men were zapped, handcuffed, and then zapped again and again. Deadman demanded Parker tell him where the drugs were stashed in the house. And Parker said there were no drugs. Pulling out his gun, Deadman fired a bullet into the wall of the adjoining laundry room before ordering Parker a second time to reveal the drugs. Parker again insisted there were no there were no narcotics. The officer then hauled the two men into the living room where all six men spewed slurs at them and accused them of taking advantage of the white woman who actually owned the house. They warned them to stay out of Rankin County and go back to, quote unquote, their side of Pearl River, referring to the neighbors, neighborhoods with a higher population of black residents. Deadman repeatedly drive stunned Jenkins, which basically is placing the taser in direct contact with his body while the two black men were being taunted. Meanwhile, Opdyke searched the house and kicked open a bedroom door where he found a toy, for lack of a better term, and a BB gun. Opdyke mounted the toy at the end of his gun and brought it into the living room. Deadman took the toy, slapped Jenkins and Parker in the face with it. He had threatened to R the men with the device. But then he stopped when he realized Jenkins had messed himself from being tased so damn so many times. Come on, y'all. Elwood then held Jenkins and Parker down on the floor in the living room while Denman poured milk, alcohol, chocolate syrup into their mouths. Denman poured cooking grease on Parker's head. And Elwood began to throw eggs at both men. The officers next forced them to disrobe and shower together to wash away evidence of A before they were brought to jail, the charging document said. The A continued in a bedroom where Opdyke, Middleton, Deadman, and McAlpin aid Parker with pieces of wood and a metal sword, y'all. Deadman, Middleton, Hartfield, and Elwood began to zap the two men repeatedly to see which device was more powerful. Edmund did it eight times. Hartfield did it five times. Deadman did four. Then Deadman fired a shot into the yard. Elwood removed a bullet from his gun forced Jenkins onto his knees. And that's when he put his weapon into his mouth. Elwood fired his piece, which it did not discharge at first. He racked the slide, put the weapon back into Jenkins' mouth, and he fired again. The bullet lacerated Jenkins' tongue, broke his jaw, and went through his neck. I don't care if I sound like a broken record right now, but I have to say it again. There is no way that Elwood should be walking away without catching a, an attempted M charge. It doesn't make any sense to me. Because of a plea deal? Man, you guys better be, the, the, they better be burying him under the damn prison. That's what I think. They're, they're pleading guilt right now, and he's going to walk away with aggravated A? What? You almost took this man out. Then also on top of it, now we got to look at the cover story. Jenkins lay bleeding on the floor as the officers convened on the back porch to devise a cover story. They went to the back porch because they knew that there was a security camera in the front and that camera could have been picking up audio or something of that sort. You know, for a fact, they even were trying to not be found uh, at the front door of this house either, y'all. Like it's, like I said, it's insane. The six officers would tell investigators Deadman found bags of drugs on Jenkins outside the house. And the officers ran inside after Jenkins. They would say Elwood would aim at him in self-defense. And Elwood was the only officer in the house at that time. 
the officers began to destroy the evidence. Middleton offered to, quote unquote, plant a throw gun he had in his patrol car on Jenkins, the document said. Elwood instead planted the BB gun that had been used earlier with the toy, all while Jenkins is still leaking out and not receiving any medical attention. They discarded one shell casing and Hartfield threw the men's soiled clothes into a wooded area and then stole the hard drive from the home surveillance system before throwing it into the creek. McAlpin and Middleton threatened to unalive the four other officers if they told the truth about what happened that night. So they even threatened their own, their own boys. All of them that were part of it, like you snitch, you're gonna get some, you're gonna be in a ditch, right? Each of the six officers filed false reports to corroborate their cover story and continued to abide by the false script in interviews with the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation, which initially investigated the incident as an officer involved shooting. At the time, local officials said the officers were at the home for a drug enforcement activity. In late June, Rankin County Sheriff Brian Bailey announced some of the office's deputies had been fired. Some, although he did not confirm the number or their names. The false charges that had been filed against Jenkins and Parker were dropped at the time of the officer's firing. Parker and Jenkins laid out the details of that night in a federal, federal civil rights lawsuit filed in mid-June, alleging six white deputies had turned off their body cameras and handcuffed, kicked, did that, hurt them, repeatedly used tasers on the two men, called them slurs, and threatened to R them. When emergency medical personnel arrived at the scene, Jenkins was taken to a hospital and underwent multiple surgeries. He has suffered permanent physical injuries and cognitive damage, including disfigurement and impairment, according to the lawsuit. Yeah, he is numb on one side of his face. It's hard for him to talk. Parker also sought medical attention for injuries suffered during the incident. Yeah, they, they, they did a number on the, these two men. The five Rankin County officers were under the purview of Sheriff Bailey, who is among the named defendants in the victim's civil lawsuit filed in June. Bailey said during a Thursday news conference he was ashamed and the badge of law enforcement was tarnished by the criminal acts of these few individuals. The sheriff also said he does not plan to resign in the wake of the charges against the six officers. Bailey is not facing any charges in connection to the incident. He says, the only thing I'm guilty of on this incident right here is trusting grown men that swore an oath to do their job correctly. Listen, guys, I'm not a big fan of sheriffs not taking any responsibility over the officers that work underneath them. Let's be real. This happened with Tyree Nichols' case. The sheriff over there in Memphis didn't step down, hasn't, as far as I know, hasn't stepped down, hasn't taken responsibility for the actions that those officers took upon Tyree Nichols. And then you look at something like this and you have the sheriff going, no, I'm not sitting, I'm not stepping down. It's not my fault. It happened over there. Those guys did it. I didn't do it. But it still happened under your watch. It still happened under your watch. You're telling me you don't know what's going on? You're telling me that there haven't been other complaints filed against any of your officers, any of those same officers? They call themselves the goon squad for crying out loud. Some of them call them the death squad. So you're telling me that you don't know anything about these guys? That they have a history of violence? That they're known to use some excessive force? They're flying under the radar? They're sending out text messages, text messages to each other saying, no, no bad mug shots? You're telling me, Sheriff Bailey, you know nothing about this? Listen, you need to take several seats. Real talk, you need to sit down. You need to resign because this is a reflection on how you run things in your department, period, point blank. There is no way that all those guys could be doing that and you not know anything about it. Man, they have little badges and, and stuff like that. You're telling me you don't know nothing? 
That just tells me you're not doing your job. That's just what I think on that. Now, when it comes to all this information, the fact that these individuals are not getting harsher charges, the fact that they're getting off easy, in my personal opinion, blows my mind. Yes, they're they're fired. Yes, they'll be in jail or in prison. But the question is, for how long? Is it justice well served or not? In my personal opinion, not entirely. Sure, there's transparency. Now it's six months later, y'all. And now we're getting transparency over the, the, the wrongdoings that they did to these two men. And God knows what they've done to other people in the past as well. And I highly recommend any person that's out here that has been has felt a, a victim to any of their hands, step forward, speak out, start pressing charges. This is the time to get your voice heard so that you can get justice as well. The more charges they look at, the more times that they plead guilty, the longer they stay behind bars like the animals that they are. Anyway, guys, that's the video. Comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. This, this breaks my heart and it just burns my cookies, y'all. I hate this because as much as we want justice, it's almost like we're getting a, a, a side serving of justice. I want a Thanksgiving meal, not just a little morsel. Let's get the justice, the right justice that all these victims rightfully deserve. Hit that like button down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Of course, if you're watching on Facebook as well, hit that follow button. Don't forget to show some love. That'll be greatly appreciated. Anyway, it's time to get going. Man, be good yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This is the Pascal Show. Bye. P A S C A L. You are now rocking with that dude, Pascal. We'll be going wild.